All right, let's get started with our very first kick, which is the staple of all martial arts moves, and of course, that is the front kick. Now, like we discussed previously, there are three parts to this kick, chamber kick and recoil, and here's how this move works. First thing you're gonna do is you're, for the front kick, you lift your knee up towards your abdomen, right? Now, what's cool about that is, when you lift your knee up, it also becomes a strike. The knee is a weapon itself. Plus, it also can act as a defense. If someone's trying to attack you, you can lift up the knee to put it in their way. It becomes kind of a blocking thing. So uh, the cool thing about kicking in the martial arts is they are multifunctional moves. It's not just about doing it because it's this way. There's a practical application behind each and every kick that we do. So for the front kick, again, hands up, back straight. Uh, base leg is going to be bent. You're going to lift the knee up and then you're just going to let your leg naturally extend out in front of you, hence the name front kick. So your hands are up here. You lift the knee up, push the leg out, bring it back, and then put it down in a controlled motion. Always the other great thing about the martial arts, it's not a one-sided sport, right? It works on both sides of your body. So you're going to take the other leg, same thing, lift that knee up, extend the kick out, bring it back, and put it down. You'll see I'm not trying to kick high on purpose. Of course, if I wanted to, because I have the flexibility, I've been doing this a long time, I can fire that kick up over my head. In the beginning stages, there's no need to do that. So when you do the front kick, again, hands up, kind of a, what we call a natural position, feet just a little bit wider than your body itself, guard up in front, back straight, lift the knee, fire the kick one, other leg, lift the knee, fire the kick two. On the application side, if you're hitting something with the kick, you're hitting with the bottom of the foot. So if I go to kick the bag, I'm driving it in in a way, it's a very effective kick kicking straight into the bag with the bottom of the foot. That is kick number one, the front kick. Let's go to kick number two. Now, kick number two, depending on the style of martial arts you learn this from, it might be called the step up flip kick, the step up round kick, the lead leg round kick. Uh, the name really is irrelevant at this point. It's more about how we actually do the kick. The lead leg flip kick or lead leg round is called that because it does come around to the side. You're gonna be hitting with the top of your foot, which is called the instep. So you're gonna point your toes, what I like to explain is, Point them as if you're driving a car and you're stepping on the gas pedal. You point those toes down. Different than the front kick chamber, the round kick and lead leg kick chamber, you're going to aim your knee at what you want to hit. So think of your knee as a laser pointer. And what you point your knee at is what's going to hit. So now this one isn't going to come up. This one is going to come to the side this way. I'm bringing my heel back to my rear end so that my foot can flip out and back and I point those toes. Now this takes a little coordination, a little practice to do, and then we add the little step with it because we'll gain some distance on this move. So again, just with your feet a little bit wider than your body and your hands up, I'm gonna go this way on the angle just so you can see the move. I'm gonna step up, I'm gonna point my knee in that direction and then let the kick flip out and back and then right back down to my stance. Step, chamber, kick and recoil, step, back. In one motion, step and kick. Of course, like all of our kicks, we're going to do it on the other side. So same thing here. I step, I point my knee in the direction that I want to go, so my leg becomes kind of like a slingshot, right? I'm flipping it out and back here, step back down to position. If I hit something solid with that, what's going to happen is I'm going to step, I'm going to hear it, slap the bag, right? The tip of my foot, top of my foot is hitting the bag, hands stay up, body stays in motion. So you just practice the prescribed amount of repetitions on the step up flip kick or the step up round kick. Kick number three is kind of the big brother to that kick and that's the rear leg round kick. Probably one of the most powerful kicks when it's done correctly is the rear leg round kick. It's traveling farther and now you have the benefit of using your hips. Your hips get to drive into that kick and rotate. So one of the things that's gonna be key here is the way that you pick up your knee, again, this is the way that I do it. If you learned it a little bit different and it works for you, by all means do it that way. But here's a little ninja trick that I like to do with the roundhouse kick. The roundhouse kick comes off the, like a roundhouse punch, comes around. Although it is strong, it is slower and easier to block. If I was to take my position, bring my knee around, and throw the same kick that I did with the front leg. But if I bring my knee up and disguise it straight, like a snap kick or a front kick, I bring it up this way and then use my hips and my leg to rotate, it becomes a much faster and more effective kick. So the difference again, what's the shortest distance between two points? A and B is the straight line. Again, I'm coming straight at it and I wanna turn my hip and fire that kick around. We have the same toe point that we do on the lead leg kick, the lead leg flip kick. So we're gonna be hitting again with the top of the foot, which is the instep. 
If I kick something on that, again, you're going to hear it different than the last kick. It makes a much bigger impact, right? It's a much stronger move on the roundhouse kick. Right leg, left leg, same thing. I'm bringing the knee up and turning the body. If I was doing that in our exercises, the way we do it, is we just practice alternating where I lift the knee up and I turn one and I can come back or I can lift the knee up and turn one, step down and then immediately kick around that leg. That is the roundhouse kick. Again, the reminder, hands up, back straight, and base leg bend. Our fourth kick that we have in this process is the side kick. Now the side kick is kind of like a jab in boxing. It's a very straight out, powerful, body stopping move. And it uses the edge of the foot and the heel, okay? So now we're not hitting with the flat bottom, which is softer. You're gonna kind of shape your foot on an edge. To do that, a little trick I like to teach people when they do the side kick is to lift up the big toe and that pushes the edge of your foot down. So you'll see now that the side edge of my foot is hitting the bag, as well as the heel of the foot. This chamber is slightly different. And what that means is when I throw the kick this time, earlier I was pointing my knee. For this kick, I'm going to point my foot at what I want to hit. So I kind of relate this to a snake, like a cobra. You're going to coil back in and then strike straight out. So when I do the kick on the bag, when I did the other one, I stepped up and pointed my knee at it. On this one, I'm gonna point my foot and my knee actually comes in towards my navel. From that position, I shoot the leg out, then bring it back and put it down, right? So from this side, step one, my hips have shifted slightly, my knee will come into my navel. Now, I fire the kick out this way and back and down. So coming straight at you, I turn completely sideways, I step up, you're gonna see my foot come right towards the camera. I shoot my leg out and back and come right back down. So we're doing reps on it on an angle so you can see it a little better. Step out and back down this way. And you're gonna feel this one in a different spot. You're gonna feel this actually in your oblique abdominals as well as your lower back. So kicking not only is really cool in the martial arts, but it works a lot of the major muscles that you need to develop yourself to be better, stronger, and more physically fit. So that will cover the four basics of the kicks that we do in our Fit30 program. I want you guys to practice, be your best, and as always, if you have any comments or questions, you can hit me up on Facebook, shoot me a PM. I'm always happy to help you reach your fitness goals. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Chris Casamassa, and I'll see you soon.